Today, I'm here with uh, Chief Spalding of the Westminster Police Department. Um, and uh, I am uh, totally thrilled to uh, be uh, speaking with him. Thank you for your uh, time uh, being with us. Always great to see you, Adam. Um, uh, can you uh, uh, tell us uh, your, um, first before we get started, uh, could you tell us your uh, full name, title, uh, uh, and department you serve with? Yes, my name is Jeff Spaulding. I'm Chief of Police here in the Westminster Police Department in Carroll County. Um, um, where, um, where were you uh, born and raised? I was born in Olney in Montgomery General Hospital, but I was raised in Western Howard County in the Lisbon area. Oh, wow. Um, when, when did you first start your career as a law enforcement officer? Well, I was very fortunate. I always kind of had a sense of what I wanted to do, and I was very fortunate to get hired as a police cadet with the Howard County Police Department right out of high school. Literally five days after high school, I started with the police department. I was a cadet for several years. When I became of age, I went to the police academy, and then uh, I had a wonderful career there, progressed up through the ranks, and retired in uh, January of 2004 as Deputy Chief of Police in Howard County and was very fortunate to get selected to serve as Chief here in Westminster and I've been here ever since. Cool. Um, um, why did uh, why did you uh, choose uh, this career path and uh, what uh, and uh, was there a defining moment that brought you uh, to that decision? And certainly no defining moment. It was always just one of those uh, careers that I felt would be interesting and engaging and give me an opportunity to help the community and, uh, and, and a bit exciting at times. And during my career, I've had uh, a lot of all of those things. I wouldn't change a thing about my career. And uh, I tell my wife regularly at some point in time, I'm going to have to get a real job and grow up, but I'm going to delay that as long as I can. What department, uh, what departments have you served in? Well, I've served with both the Howard County Police for 31 years, and then I've been here in Westminster for about 10 and a half. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, it must mean I'm old, but I <laughs> don't really feel that way. But I think the uh, image in the mirror reflects I'm a little older than I was when I started. More experience, the uh, uh, better you are. <laughs> well, let's hope so. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, what does uh, the torch run mean to you? Uh, when uh, escorting uh, the flame through your wonderful town? Well, I, I think the torch is a, an outward symbol that law enforcement has chosen to support Special Olympics and the incredible athletes of Special Olympics in a very public way, not only by carrying the torch through our communities, but by raising both funds and awareness to support the incredible work of Special Olympics that goes on locally here in Carroll County, across Maryland, and as you well know, across the world. So for me, it, it's just an opportunity to uh, publicly endorse that relationship that law enforcement has had with Special Olympics for many, many years here in Maryland. And uh, it's kind of home for me. I've been doing it so long. This year's International uh, Law Enforcement Torch Run program states uh, what uh, started as a uh, humble idea to involve uh, involve law enforcement in the community and uh, support Special Olympics now leads the world in opportunity and uh, hope for those with intellectual disabilities. Why has uh, this partnership worked so well? Well, I think first and foremost it works so well because over the course of the years of the torch run so many police officers have had the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one relationships with athletes and their families, just like you and I have had for a number of years here in Maryland. It's those relationships that reinforce the value of Special Olympics and the importance of what we do in the torch run, and it just causes people to commit uh, their time and their energy and their efforts to go out and work on behalf of the torch run and Special Olympics. That's, that's what it's been for me. You know, the first time I went uh, to an award ceremony and presented an award, I, I really, it struck a chord with me that has stayed with me ever since. And since then, I've had so many incredibly powerful um, 
interactions with athletes and their families. It's just one of those things that becomes starts as a mission, ends as a passion. Um, what uh, what has it uh, um, being part of the uh, law enforcement torch run? Um, what uh, has it accomplished uh, to date for you? Well, for me, I think it's made me a better person. I certainly have accumulated many, many, many friends and, and uh, wonderful relationships with athletes and their families and law enforcement officers around the world that share the same passion that I do. So for me, that's been wonderful. Uh, for Special Olympics, what we've been able to accomplish as a team in the Law Enforcement Torch Run is uh, to raise more than $3 million last year for the athletes here in Maryland. Uh, internationally, we raised $55 million last year and collectively through the history of the Torch Run, We've raised over $550 million for Special Olympics. So wow. that's, a, that's a pretty uh, daunting uh, record, but it's something that just drives us to do more as we go forward. What, does, uh, what do you think the Torch Run has left to accomplish? Well, as we know here in Maryland, uh, there are many, many people with developmental disabilities that could benefit from Special Olympics that either don't know about it or, or don't have the connections or the resources to avail themselves of Special Olympics. So that we know that we're only reaching a, a small percentage of those who could really benefit from Special Olympics. And Maryland is a, is a very progressive state as compared to many parts of the country and many parts of the world where Special Olympics is hardly known. As I've done the international torch runs in Japan and other places around the world, it, I've been amazed to find out how little people really know and understand about the life-changing work of Special Olympics. And so there's plenty for us to do here in Maryland as well as across the world to educate people about the life-changing benefits of Special Olympics and get those people, those individuals that could benefit from these programs in while we are still working to raise funds to support the, all the costs that's associated with doing the wonderful things that Special Olympics does. It has uh, grown to uh, the international levels. How, uh, how did such uh, an idea, uh, such as the Torch Run, um, uh, catch on in so many parts of the country and, uh, and uh, world that uh, can be so different? Well, I think it happened at a few levels. First and foremost, Chief Lemonian, he, he spawned this idea, and he, through his own private efforts. Uh, he approached the International Association of Chiefs of Police, convinced them that it was appropriate to adopt Special Olympics as their charity of choice back in 1986. And, and then he began to drive that process by making phone calls to individuals that he had met through the law enforcement profession across the U.S. Uh, through that process, many, many dedicated people have become affiliated with the Torch Run, and they too have worked very hard to expand the horizons of the torch run first across the U.S. and now across the world. At this point in time, all 50 states have an LATR program and uh, there are currently programs in 43 or 44 foreign countries across the world and that continues to grow as a result of the hard work of the International Council or the Executive Council of the Law Enforcement Torch Run. What events in your, uh, in your career in law enforcement uh, uh, in Maryland are you uh, most proud of? Which specific events? Gee, I think they're all special. Uh, obviously the plunge and, and the Deep Creek Dunk are the two that are our most high profile events. The plunge has been in place for close to 20 years now. It's raised an incredible amount of money for Special Olympics. It requires a tremendous amount of partnership between law enforcement and Special Olympics Maryland and the Park Service and, and our many uh, sponsors and media partners, but uh, it's certainly worth the effort on an annual basis. And I guess as an, an event, those two uh, kind of have the most uh, local character and color. I enjoy working both of those events. The, uh, uh, I, I know the uh, plunge is uh, a huge thing because... I love doing it, and I know you're always there to help us. You're one of those crazy uh, super plungers yeah. that jumps in <laughs> once every 24 hours. I don't know how you do it, my friend, but yeah. uh, I'm always there to support you. But our, our, uh, us athletes are always 
happy to have you there with us. Um, how, uh, how, uh, how does uh, uh, every, um, all these events you've done motivate you? Well, it gives me an opportunity to, to uh, most frequently interact with athletes and their family. I mean, that's what it takes. And I have so many relationships now uh, with athletes that uh, that just drives me to do more and better for Special Olympics. And it's, it has obviously become a passion of mine and, and many others that we work very closely with in Maryland. The other uh, piece of that is that we just have such a wonderful law enforcement team here in Maryland. The, our executive committee is working very hard behind the scenes 12 months a year to, to try to think of new of creative ways to raise money and awareness for Special Olympics. And they are equally dedicated as I, and, and they all put as much time and energy into what they do as I. And frankly, we have a lot of fun in the process. Uh, speaking of fun, what, uh, what Maryland uh, Torch Run memories are uh, you uh, most proud of and uh, would be willing to share with our uh, viewers? I, I think probably the, uh, the time I spent giving awards at the various games, the local games here and Carroll and Howard before that and, and the state games, uh, I, I certainly will never forget uh, a local athlete here in Carroll County, Annie Sturgeon. She and I have grown to be good friends, and oh, about four years ago, down at the summer games, Annie uh, was to receive a gold medal, and so she was standing on the upper riser in her wet bathing suit getting ready to get her medal, and I kind of horned my way in and said, hey, let me give Annie her medal, and uh, so I went over and presented her with her gold medal, and she was so excited that she literally just jumped off the riser right into my arms, quite to my surprise. Uh, we practically went head over heels, but... Uh, she was just so excited at the, uh, at the opportunity to receive another gold medal. Uh, it was just one of the highlights of my time with Special Olympics. The, uh, I know the memories are always there uh, forever lasting for you. And, and they are. And I've, Yeah, there's some yeah. other memories like uh, my friend Adam Hayes riding a bucking bronco yeah. oh. uh, in Buffalo, New York. Actually, it was a bu bucking yeah. buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. I have many, some of which we yeah. probably shouldn't talk about in this venue. What happened to uh, what stays in? <laughs> at the, what happens at the conference stays at the conference. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, um, uh, if you were speaking to some of uh, uh, the new recruits uh, just starting their careers in law enforcement, what would you tell them about um, uh, their uh, in their uh, chosen uh, in their chosen path, and uh, then getting involved with Special Olympics Maryland? Mm -hmm in the law enforcement torch run? Well, I tell them that they have chosen a career of service as a law enforcement officer and that part of our job is to protect the community and protect all those members of the community. And this is one tremendous way to both serve and protect. Uh, unfortunately, in, in our community, in our culture, people with developmental disabilities are sometimes shunned or, or shut away. And uh, that's not right and it's not fair, it's not appropriate. So. Uh, to participate in Special Olympics activities, to give medals to athletes, to give them some sense of value, to, to, to uh, help them feel more included in what goes on in our community. All those things are very positive and it's just a very positive experience from every perspective. Uh, as you're well aware from things that are occurring in the news internationally, the police don't always they're not always regarded as a positive presence in the community, but when police officers get out and interact with Special Olympics athletes and, and do positive things like the torch run, it paints a picture that we're uh, part of the community, that we're here to help and serve, and I think it simply um, helps the community see us in, in a different light, in a more positive light, and all those things are good for law enforcement as a profession. You were recently uh, awarded an uh, award at uh, the 2014 International Law Enforcement Torch Run Conference in New Orleans, Louisiana. Would you be willing to share the name of uh, those awards and what they re represent? Well, I received the uh, Richard Lemonian International Hall of Fame Award from the Law Enforcement Torch Run Executive Committee. Uh, that award obviously named after Chief Lemonian that founded the, the Law Enforcement Torch Run. Uh, it is an incredible honor to be included in, a, in that group of individuals who have uh, many of who are uh, personal heroes of mine, like John Noonan 
and, and many others that uh, have spent a good portion of their life serving this very humble cause. Uh, it's pretty incredible, almost unbelievable that I would be included in that mix. I, I usually prefer to be behind the scenes, not in the limelight, but uh, I, I was very uh, honored and humbled to, to be the recipient of that award in, in New Orleans. And what it's done for me is just to cause me to rededicate myself to do more and better for the athletes of Special Olympics. And that's what I'll be doing. How did you feel uh, being honored by uh, your colleagues and fellow law enforcement officers from fellow law enforcement from all around the world? Well, happy to say the least, overwhelmed, uh, humbled. Uh, it was a pretty incredible experience. At the conference, there were about 1,100 police officers from around the world that do the same thing that, that I do here in Westminster and Carroll County in their communities. And so they all get it, and they understand the importance of what we do. So to be uh, acknowledged uh, in that venue was just very, very special, and uh, certainly something I consider one of the highlights of my law enforcement career. When I heard that, I was very proud of you. I was yeah, so I got your text message, that. buddy. And I was so, uh, I was so thrilled for you. And oh, thank you. You do so much behind the scenes, but uh, you definitely deserved it. So. Well, thank you, Adam. That's high praise coming from me, my friend. <laughs> um, being uh, selected as a final uh, uh, torch runner at the global level is such a huge honor. Um, in the uh, games, you have helped carry the flame. Uh, name one or two of the most interesting places uh, you have been and explain uh, the impact of the torch run it has had to better impact the athletes in the program within it. Wow, I've really been very, very fortunate in my, torch, my final leg experience with torch run. I had the opportunity to go to Japan in 2005 as a, as a torch runner and then since then I, I went to Athens, Greece, and, uh, and also to uh, Pyeongchang, China, uh, Korea uh, last year for the uh, final leg. So I've had the opportunity to go to some incredible places that I never thought I would visit. In terms of some of the most interesting experiences, uh, gosh, uh, as, as you well know, as an international torch runner from our time in Greece, we, we uh, had the opportunity to be on a leg that took us through the Greek Isles for a couple of weeks. and. That was really just an incredible experience. The middle of summer, the weather was perfect. We were cruising between islands on, on uh, ferries. Uh, we were doing torch runs in these quaint little towns around these beautiful islands in Greece. And uh, I mean, it was a lot of work, as you know. That was from basically six in the morning till sometimes two in the morning we would be out running and doing ceremonies. But saw some beautiful places, some uh, the, the ruins in Athens, Greece, the uh, temples in the islands of, of uh, Greece were incredible. Uh, some of the experiences that I had in Japan and uh, spending time in Japan, I had the, the great honor of sharing a room for the duration of our final leg with an athlete from Connecticut, uh, Chris Perot, and that was a, an incredible experience. First time I had an opportunity to actually spend really, literally 24 hours a day with an athlete for an extended period of time. And that really was an eye-opening experience for me. And Chris and I have quite a bond that we still maintain to this day. Um, and as to what it means to the, to the countries where we do those final legs, as I mentioned a little earlier, many of these countries around the world have very, very little knowledge of what Special Olympics is or why it's so important. Uh, and the final leg as we go about these these countries and have these ceremonies each day and an officer speaks and an athlete speaks. Uh, it helps the, those communities to understand the really incredible importance of what Special Olympics does uh, there locally wherever they are in their country as well as internationally across the world. And hopefully through that process people are becoming more aware and more supportive and, and they're also changing their views about developmental disabilities and and how they personally treat and interact with those with developmental disabilities. The reality is that uh, we're all one, we're all alike, uh, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, and uh, the more inclusive uh, the world is, the better place it will be for everyone. And I think the Special Olympics and the, the final leg helps us uh, paint that message as we move across the, uh, the host countries. Um, the, uh, um, many 
uh, Special Olympics athletes are uh, involved in uh, your events throughout the year. How can they become involved and uh, help carry the flame of hope in their hearts as well as in their hands? Well, uh, typically there's a county coordinator for the tours run in each county across the state. Um, so uh, we, I'm a regional coordinator. I coordinate torch run activities in seven Maryland counties in Baltimore City. And part of my role is to make sure that the county coordinators have the appropriate connections with that Special Olympics Maryland. And through those connections, if they don't have them, we can help them make connections with the local program. So we have a very close working relationship with the folks at Special Olympics Carroll County. Uh, whenever we have activities, uh, we just did our Cops on Rooftop event. We had athletes and their families out there for the entire weekend for us. Uh, it's a great partnership. We have an opportunity to meet and spend time with athletes and their families, which is always a great positive for us. And it also helps when, when we get police officers who are new to the program out and involved in that venue and, and interacting with athletes and their families. They want to come back and they want to bring their friends back. Um, the same occurs with the athletes when they get a chance to spend some time with police officers and see us as real people and not just authority figures. They see that we're just regular folks just like they are and that um, we're fun to be around and therefore more athletes will want to come out and participate in our events and, and we welcome that. It's a true partnership. Did they, uh, um, when you were up on the roof, did it, uh, any of the public come and uh, wave and say hi? Oh, we had a lot of, uh, yeah. we had a lot of the public come out and support our cause. We were very fortunate. We uh, made our goal of $8,600 wow. and uh, uh, we had some great coverage from our local media. Uh, Jennifer Franciati from Channel 11 is always very supportive. She lives here in our community. She always makes sure that we have plenty of media coverage in the local TV market. So uh, it was a very successful event. We had a great time. This year the weather was perfect as compared to last year where we did it in the monsoon. Uh, so I, I'm very pleased with this year's event. Uh, obviously as we move into the fall and winter we're looking at the the plunge and then the dunk and then in the spring we'll begin again with uh, many of the other events that we do uh, leading up to the summer games. Very cool. Um, would you like to share uh, with us uh, one or two Special Olympic moments uh, uh, that uh, define the movement and its relationship with law enforcement? Well, I uh, every year as we do our local torch run here in the county, uh, we run five torches actually from the corners of the county here to Westminster. Then we all join together as a team and we run the final leg through the streets here. And we have an athlete or more sometimes on each of those legs. But when we get up to McDaniel College where we all meet as a group to come down Main Street as a group, uh, I get the athletes together and kind of brief them on what we're going to do. and. Those are all local athletes, many of whom I've had many uh, opportunities to interact with before. It's kind of like a little family, and I always consider that to be a very special time for me. And when we uh, finish our run, uh, we have a ceremony at City Hall where we, uh, we recognize each of those athletes, give them a nice, uh, what we call a, a Guardian of the Flame certificate for their participation each year. We have some athletes that now have five or six of those citations because they've been involved over the years. So it's always very special to have those one-on-one -on -one interactions with, with uh, our local athletes. The other uh, thing that rings very true to my heart is the, uh, the Law Enforcement Torch Run appoints a long, uh, Special Olympics athlete ambassador that uh, accompanies us on our, many of our events and our international conference and other things. And that athlete uh, is really acting on behalf or in, on uh, behalf of the other athletes across the state of Maryland and and you were one of our athletes you were our first athlete ambassador went to a number of conferences with us they've been with us on innumerable events throughout the state across the years and uh, and you all will always be a very special friend as a result of that now we have a new ambassador Michael Hepp from Anne Arundel County he's doing similarly an excellent job uh, and those relationships that we develop with our ambassadors are just pretty incredible. One of those things I will always cherish. Um, I can tell you I'll always cherish my time being with you guys. Um, uh, is there anything uh, else we haven't covered that you would like to share with us? No, I, I, you know, if there are any law enforcement officers that have the opportunity to see this video, I would just simply say if you haven't taken the opportunity 
to go out and participate in a torch run event, they need, that you need to do so. That uh, establishing those relationships with athletes and their families will change your life and in a great way. And it's great for us as individuals, and it's great for the law enforcement profession to have those kinds of interactions in our, the communities that we serve. And it's a very deserving population of folks, just great people. Uh, and, uh, and I highly recommend it. It will change your life. Oh, well, uh, I want to uh, thank you for uh, spending your time, uh, taking the time to talk with us. We really, really appreciate it. And I know in behalf of us athletes, we will always uh, have, love to have uh, the law enforcement to be there for us. Thank you, my friend. We always will be. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm Adam Hayes, and uh, we uh, and uh, we were here talking with uh, Chief uh, Spalding of the Westminster Police Department. Mm -hmm.